Good morning, students. Hope you are all doing well. Today we will begin with the next part of our revision. Uh, before we go into that, I would just like to give you a quick reminder. See, when you have your exam, especially your history paper, and uh, for your MCQs, all the questions will be in multiple choice question. Please be very careful while reading the questions because some of the questions might not ask you to give the right answer rather it will be choose the incorrect option okay so read all the questions carefully see whether the statements which are given there it's saying choose the correct option or choose the incorrect option choose right true i mean select true or false like those kind of thing you have to be very careful of that while reading the answer while solving your paper it shouldn't be that you'll say I knew the answer but I didn't see the incorrect word so I messed it up. So I'm warning you beforehand just make sure that you read the question thoroughly properly before answering. Okay. Let us begin. Town planning within the lower town. It is the lower town of the Mohanjitaro that housed all the residential buildings as well as the different clusters of workshops that produced arts and craft material which were utilized by the people living there now regarding the housing pattern one thing which is clear that these housing patterns or these cities were planned first and then when the building were constructed later on the residents moved in so whatever decisions that had to be taken about the location of the house, it was not taken by the head of the family. It was actually taken by a, a superior authority, you can say, whatever that authority was, who was ruling that place. It is this person who designated which person or which household was going to live in that particular area. So since this was a planned urban center, what archaeologists presume is that they say that the drains and streets were laid out first and they were done in accordance to a grid-like pattern that is like a chess board system of planning as they were all intersecting at right angles. And the houses were constructed or built along these roads. So each house had to be constructed in a way that whatever waste water was produced from that house, it would flow into the street drain, okay, which was already covered. The Harappans did not have uncovered street drains. Now this street drain would then carry it outside the city. Jaise hamara abhi present day mein nala neher sab hota hai, waise hi us samay mein bhi hota sa. So this waste water was carried and dumped outside the city so this clearly shows what remarkable planning the Harappan cities exemplified it was class apart I mean imagine we are still using the same technique even now in fact this kind of drainage which was seen at uh, in within the Harappan civilization would not be seen again until the modern age arrived that is it will not be seen for another 3000 years which is something to be bewildered about even today let us now look into the architecture of the residential buildings that is the houses of these lower town now each house was built in a way that the person who was traveling through these streets they could not see what was happening inside these houses there was a lot of concern for privacy then whatever activities that had to be taken place that whether it's cooking or weaving or spinning it used to take place within the courtyard that is the veranda of the house okay now some of these houses could have been multi-storied too what does that indicate multi-story matlab obviously these people were richer than or they needed a bigger house than the one that had one storied building okay 
and how do we claim that they were multi story we can see evidence of a staircase in that house leading to the second floor and then one very important aspect of this house is that each house most of them had wells within the house itself okay and this well was positioned in a way that even an outsider could come and take the necessary amount of water without disrupting the household activity so scholars have estimated that there were 700 wells that were found they are giving you an accurate picture on the exact number of wells that were found that is 700 so next is the citadel the citadel consisted of two very important buildings it consisted of more but we know the functioning of only two till now one is the great bath the other one is the the warehouse which has not survived much because it was made up of wooden beams you can say so that is why it has not survived the times so warehouse might have been used to keep goods okay the important ones maybe the imported goods or goods needed to carry out ritualistic functions so those were kept in the great warehouse the other important structure was the great bath okay it was a huge tank which had steps descending into it which was located in the north and south orientation of that tank now this tank was sealed with a cementing material of mortar or gypsum you can say which was done in order to prevent the seepage so this great bath as the scholars suggest might have been used for ritual purposes so in order to study the socio economic difference that prevailed within the harappan society historians or scholars they tend to study the burials or the grave sites which were found within these settlements now one thing that you have to keep keep in mind that the harappans did not cremate their dead matlab they did not used to bury their dead uh, i'm sorry they did not used to set fire to the corpses of their dead what they did is that they buried them in graves so this burying in grave also depicted their belief in after life that is life after death so some of the ways through which scholars have tried to infer from the artifacts that have been found in these graves are suppose these graves are some of these graves are lined with bricks so that might have been an indication of social or economic difference okay sometimes these graves can be found with pottery and ornaments then jewelry has been found in the burial sites of both men and women but there were no precious stones as such only semi precious items then another important thing that you can keep in mind which was found in the grave is a copper mirror an instance of copper mirror now another way to track social difference within the harappans was to study the artifacts that the harappans used these artifacts were categorized into two bases one was the goods that were classified as the luxurious goods the other one was that which were classified as utilitarian goods utilitarian matlab they had utility or they served the functional purpose now for luxurious goods scholars say that those made up of rare materials or those materials which were difficult to procure which might have been procured from outside were called luxurious goods then an example of it is given a fine spot next so objects which were used for daily use 
such as those made up of stone or clay including pottery or the different kind of vessels so these were called utilitarian goods problem arises when articles of daily use can be made up of rare or luxurious materials so historians don't know to place it under which category for example a spindle whorl that is a kind of a proto charkha which was used for spinning so it was used for a mundane activity like spinning cotton but it was built by a rare material of faience so historians or archaeologist become confused as to place it under which category another thing that you have to keep in your mind is that the artifacts especially the luxurious or the rare ones were found in larger settlements because wahan demand zyada tha such as mohenjo-daro or harappa whereas certain small settlements might have been centers of craft production so we will do this in the next class kindly go through your material all the best for your exam take care now another